Hello and welcome to episode six of the Behind the Silicon series. I'm Jessica Naziri here in sunny San Diego and I'll be taking the reins for this one. I'll be joining the Snapdragon insiders with some new faces too. And we'll be diving deep into what Snapdragon does best. And if you guess mobile, you're right. It is so exciting to meet you all in person. I'm very pumped, but tell us a little bit about yourselves before we get started. Yeah, my name is Paul and I'm a tech content creator from the UK. And I'm Jasmine, I'm also a content creator from China. I'm Yunfei from Jikowa and we do tech reviews on CPUs and other chips. We have a great lineup, a range of people to speak with. What are you most excited about? You know, where they're gonna go with mobile, like making it even better. I can't wait to see how Snapdragon technology will enhance our mobile experiences. I'm super curious about how you really make those amazing chips. I want to know all about the rumored CPU. I'm so excited. We're getting a first-hand look. Let's get started. Uh, Let's go. First up, we're joining Chris Patrick, SVP and General Manager of Mobile here at Qualcomm. I'm really excited. He's actually joining us on a video call from India with a Snapdragon X Elite powered laptop, one we heard so much about in previous episodes. Great to be with you all. I run our smartphone business here at Qualcomm. So we do the chips and software that power most uh, smartphones. Uh, I also uh, lead the team that does watches as well as earbuds. Snapdragon has been a leading innovator, powering some of the best smartphones. So where are you heading now? We always have incredible technology coming down the pipe gaming, really cool experiences coming on, on camera. And uh, we have a brand new processor we're excited to announce in just a couple of weeks. So what kind of process do you have to go through when developing such a mobile processor? The designing the chip itself, it takes us almost three years from the time we have the initial concept until we pull this incredible team together to bring all these different technology components to actually assembling the chip, to sending the chip out for prototyping, to bring the software together and then work with our partners to come up with a final design. So how do you design future for technologies and experiences? Right here at Qualcomm, we do our own processors for the GPU or for the camera and even for the CPU. So that's why we're really excited to announce a new custom CPU coming to mobile. Technologies like generative AI didn't exist until recently. So did you anticipate that it will develop so rapidly? We've been actually been looking at AI for a long, long time. We've actually had AI in our products for over a decade. So when the generative AI uh, technology started to emerge, we were ready to implement it very quickly. So the smartphones are incredible these days. You pretty much find it impossible to see how they can get better. How do you innovate? I think there are incredible experiences coming in AI. Imagine a full-fledged assistant on your phone that are responsive to you, it knows your background, even anticipate your needs. So I'm actually a huge gamer, especially for mobile. What can I expect in terms of uh, mobile gaming technologies? Gamers like you, gamers like me, can expect uh, some incredible visual quality with things like ray tracing, global illumination. There's some incredible features coming on quality. Uh, but then we have some uh, incredible processing power with our new CPU that's gonna make the power consumption really low. And finally, I think AI is gonna make a big difference in gaming. We just saw this incredible demo at China Joy where AI is actually animating a companion for you that can respond dynamically, can listen to voice commands, can converse with you naturally. Some of these experiences are gonna be incredible. It's day two here at Qualcomm HQ, and we're joined by Frank Reynolds at the Engineering Development Center. This is where we take the latest prototype Snapdragon chips, and we build them into prototype phones, which are used by engineers across the whole company to finish their development and their testing. How many labs like this are there at Qualcomm campus? Well, this is the only full-service uh, facility that does full final assembly and test of devices like this, as well as the only one that has fully automated circuit card assembly lines. What do we do first? We're gonna head into the factory, but first, let's put some lab coats on so we can protect the devices from static electricity. We're so official now. Yeah. Yes. So this is Kevin. He's going to tell you all about our automated circuit card assembly lines. Hi. So I'm gonna show you each individual stations of what it does. How important is on-site prototyping? For Qualcomm, it's, it's extremely important because of the time to market. Uh, with prototype in-house plus close to the design team, we can turn the products back into the design to test within a day or two. Uh, yeah. um, so at this station, you will see the circuit car semi load into the machine and it's gonna print a layer so that you can make all the connections. 
This is the first station in line that actually plays the chips on the circuit card. What it does is pick up all of these and then it'll place on the circuit card exactly how we program it. So this is where you put all the resistors onto the solar motherboard? Yeah, the resistor, capacitor, inductors, or transistor, and stuff like that. Uh, this is where it happens. So how long does it take to place a chip on the circuit card? This machine can do 120,000 components in an hour. Wow. Wow. It is. Oh my gosh. It's amazing how accurate it is with the speed it's going as well. Yes, it's got laser, it's got camera, that detect everything. That's how I keep the accuracy. So here we have an inspector that inspects the board, make sure everything is the way it's supposed to be before we go into the reflow oven, which at the reflow we will cure everything. So right here is the end of the CCA circuit car assembly process. She's here is going to do all the inspection of it to catch any defect with anything that she can see. She will do the x-ray, which is anything that she cannot catch. This is where we take the circuit boards that Kevin made downstairs with that Snapdragon chip. You wrap them up in plastics and put all the good stuff on them, like the display, cameras, speakers, and other things. Is there an order to the process a board will go through when testing? We have these circuit boards here that are connected together. They're the digital, the RF, and the Bluetooth Wi-Fi connectivity cards. We'll do some testing on them. We'll add more components, the antennas, the cables, and other parts. We wrap it up with the display and everything else so it looks more like a, a phone. Why does it still have everything around it? This is a modular design that allows engineers to upgrade or swap out different parts without us having to make a whole new phone for them. How do you decide which test to conduct? We have a manufacturing IT system, cross-reference the engineering test software that they've given us, and then it tells us which tests we need to run. Having this ability here, allows us to make changes to hardware, software, and testing on the fly and get working phones with Snapdragon chips to consumers a lot faster. So now we're at a digital test station. We have our final assembly and we're doing that last testing on the display. We also make these in a stretch version. It's sort of an exploded phone with all the parts spread out. That makes it easier for engineering to do the testing so that they test different chips on the same platform. For example, at this stage of testing, we're just waiting to make sure that the display has the correct test pattern, and then it will move on to continue testing the Bluetooth, cameras, and other functionality. We're now joined by Manju Varma, the Director of Product Management. I'm so happy to be here with you all. So for those who don't know already, could you please tell us what exactly an Orion CPU is? Qualcomm Orion CPU is completely custom built from the ground up. We introduced um, Orion CPU in our X-Series first to unlock you know, the most powerful AI PCs, elevating performance and power efficiency to whole new levels. And we are excited that we are now introducing Qualcomm Orion CPU to smartphones. So we've heard a lot about Orion CPUs in previous episodes. How different will it be for the mobile platform? There are a lot of considerations we need to keep in mind. One, there is the form factor. A smartphone is about four to five times smaller than a laptop. The other one is thermal envelope. Laptops have fans, smartphones don't. A smartphone form factor really constricts how big your battery can be. As a team, we really need to take all of this into consideration when we are designing the Qualcomm Orion CPU for smartphones. So how do you manage to balance the power and performance? We look at all the technologies that exist today. For example, we look at process node and architectures that move the needle, be it CPU, GPU, or ISP. And we make conscious decisions on how to elevate performance in order to address the most demanding workloads. And how will all of that affect a user experience? The CPU truly gets stabbed on almost all of your on-device interactions and experiences. The CPU has a symphony of cores that are seamlessly working together to deliver the best possible outcome for any experience. So what kind of experiences are you talking about? Gaming. 
is an experience. Not many people realize this. The CPU actually goes hand in hand with the GPU by dividing up the tasks among its multiple cores. And this really helps boost frame rates and adds more detail to your screen faster. Well, what is the performance of Orion processors for mobile? I wish I could give you all the details right now. You would have to tune in to the Snapdragon Summit that's happening in a few weeks to hear all about our brand new Orion CPU. Well, what can we look forward to in terms of mobile in the immediate and long-term future? I will tell you this. Our next generation Snapdragon 8 series is going to transform the mobile industry with speeds and performance that I've never seen before. It's an exciting era, and I'm so thrilled to watch it unfold. That's huge, so are we, we're so excited. And I'm really looking forward to hearing more when we can know officially everything about the new CPU. So that's the end of our trip here with Qualcomm. What did you guys think? Amazing, the, the circuit board uh, part was my favorite, like how fast the machine goes and how accurate it puts in the little resistors and the capacitors. And that speed was incredible. I feel so excited about you know chatting with all the specialists and engineers telling me so much information. It's so informative here. The AI which mentioned by Chris really impressed me. I really want to experience some new applications uh, with AI which can change our working. I feel like it's already happening right now. Uh, yeah. yeah. And that's it for this episode. I'm so excited to see how Snapdragon and continues to innovate in this new era of Qualcomm's Orion CPU. The Behind the Silicon series has been shot on Snapdragon. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell for notifications.